Hello and welcome to MathsWithDavid.com. I'm David Swanson and today we're going to be looking at a complex numbers question on the Pure Mathematics 3 paper, that's the P3 paper of the Cambridge International A Level. So we'll start by reading the question. Part A. Without using a calculator, solve the equation 3w plus 2iw star equals 17 plus 8i, where w star denotes the complex conjugate of w. Give your answer in the form a plus bi. Now we just need to remember that a, a conjugate number, if you have x plus yi, the conjugate number is x minus yi. And here we can just substitute x plus yi for w and x minus yi for w star and then go through and solve our equation. So we've got 3w plus 2iw star equals 17 plus 8i. We can write that as 3x plus 3yi plus 2i times by x minus yi equals 17 plus 8i. And then if we expand the brackets on the left hand side, we get 3x plus 3yi plus 2xi plus 2y, because our i squared gives a, as a minus 1, it cancels with the other minus, equals 17 plus 8i. And then if we put all our real parts together and all our imaginary parts together, so we can compare them on both sides of our equation, we've got 3x plus 2y plus, in brackets, 2x plus 3y times by i is equal to 17 plus 8i. Now this will give us a system of equations or a set of simultaneous equations where the real part on the left is compared with the real part on the right and the imaginary part on the left is compared with the imaginary part on the right. So 3x plus 2y equals 17, we'll call that equation alpha, and 2x plus 3y equals 8, we can call that equation beta. Now in order to solve these simultaneous equations, various methods to do it, I'm going to multiply equation alpha by 2 all the way through and multiply equation beta by 3 and then we'll have 6x in both equations and we can subtract the equations to get rid of that 6x. So we'll say 2 times equation alpha gives us 6x plus 4y equals 34 and 3 times equation beta gives us 6x plus 9y equals 24 and then if we do our twice equation alpha subtracted from our 3 times equation beta we get 5y equals minus 10, which gives us that y equals minus 2. So we just need to substitute that back into one of our equations. I'll substitute it into alpha, where it gives us 6x minus 8 equals 34. Adding 8 to both sides, 6x equals 42, so x equals 7. And we can use equation beta as a check step if we want to make sure we've got that right, to see that 6 times by 7 plus 9 times by minus 2 is equal to 42 minus 18, which is 24, which is the right side of equation beta. So we've checked that it's correct. So for our final answer, we put x plus yi, where x is 7 and y is minus 2. So our final answer is 7 minus 2i. OK, so our second question, we're looking at the intersection point of two bits of information that we're given. The bit of the information on the right is more straightforward, so we'll start with that. It says the distance between our points and 3, z, an absolute value of z minus 3, is equal to the distance between our points and 3i, the absolute value of z minus 3i. So in Cartesian coordinates terms, that's saying our, all points that are equidistant from 3, 0 and 0, 3. Well, to be equidistant from 3, 0 and 0, 3, it's the perpendicular bisector of the line joining them, which here is clearly the line y equals x. It's making a 45 degree angle with the, uh, with the x-axis there. So we've got one equation, y equals x. The other information we're given, we're told that the argument of z minus 2i is pi over 6, or 30 degrees. Now if we think about this uh, pi over 6, this 30 degrees, this is a standard angle. So if we've got, uh, if we've got 30 degrees, if we imagine going, if we, if we draw this line on our argand diagram, and we imagine going 1 up, now we know if this is the sine of 30 is a half, 
So sine of 30 is opposite of a hypotenuse. So if we've got one up, then we've got two on our hypotenuse. So we can do the square root of two squared minus one squared, the square root of four minus one, which is uh, the square root of three, that's our x distance. So we can say every time we go across root three, we go up one. So another way of saying that, our z minus two i, which is like a y minus two, is equal to one over the root three of x, where we've got the rise of one over the root of root three as the, um, as the gradient with no, no intercept because this is going through the origin. So y minus two is x over root three. So y is x over root three plus two. So we simply have two equations that we need to solve, but both are equal to y. So we can say x is equal to x over root three plus two, which we can factorize there. x times by one minus one over root three equals two. If we divide both sides by the coefficient of x, we get x equals 2 over, we can rewrite that as root 3 minus 1 over root 3, and then divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction, so we've got 2 root 3 over root 3 minus 1. If we put that into our calculator, to three decimal places, it's 4.732, so we've got x is 4.732, and we already know we're on the line y equals x, so y is also 4.732. So then our last part of our question, we need our r e to the i theta. Now we know theta is 45 degrees or pi over 4 because we're on our y equals x line. To find out r, we take the magnitude of the point 4.732, 4.732, which we can use Pythagoras' theorem. So the square root of 2 times by 4.732 squared. So to three significant figures, that's 6.69. So we can write our final answer as 6.69 e to the pi i over 4. So let's go through and think of where the marks are assigned. We get a first accuracy mark on the first question for putting in our x plus y i into the left hand side. And um, even before we, we multiply it out, just for putting in the x plus y i and x minus y i there for knowing that our conjugate is x minus y i. Then we get a method mark for splitting out the real and imaginary parts to make a system of two equations. That's a method mark. They don't have to be the correct numbers. We get another method mark for solving those equations to get a value of y and a value of x. Again, a method mark. The numbers don't have to be correct. Then a final accuracy mark if we end up with the correct answer of 7 minus 2i, so four marks altogether. Five marks in the second part. The first is an accuracy mark for finding that the line y equals x is, is the relevant for the second uh, equation. A second accuracy mark for finding that y equals x over root 3 plus 2 is the way to map out the first equation. And then we get a method mark if we go ahead and solve those either for x or y to get a, a value there. And then we've got two more accuracy marks. One is for our theta if we identify that theta is pi over 4. And the second one is for our R, our magnitude, providing that that is 6.69. And we, to get that second one, we need to put them together in the R e to the i theta. So one mark for the theta, and one mark for writing R e to the i theta with the correct number, 6.69e to the pi i over 4. So that's the question completed. I hope that's been useful. There are lots of other complex numbers questions from the Pure Mathematics 3 paper on the website www.mathswithdavid.com. If you prefer to watch on YouTube, we'll include a link here to those other videos and also that will, a link that will allow you to subscribe to the channel so you'll be updated on new videos that come up. Good luck with your maths. Look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.